Hello, my friends. I'm Pittsburgh Pat, and I'm here with Gary Lyon Otto, my good friend. Well, How are you today? I am well. That's great. I am well. We always talk about some interesting stuff. We're going to talk about something interesting today. What What are we going to talk about today? Well, I want to talk about the black hole nature of the universe. The black hole nature of the universe. And it's interesting. The universe is a black hole. And, and right now, people don't believe that's the case. They play around with it, but they don't believe it. Uh, and the reason I don't believe it is the current paradigm for how black holes work right. doesn't really allow for it. But uh, if, you, if you really take the same formulations and interpret them literally versus they, they say, well, they play around with it. Okay. They, they tinker with the explanation. But if you take the actual general relativity formulas, which we're not going to get into because a little bit beyond, beyond the level of this uh, interview but the thing is if but you, it's in your books Gary's written two books yeah. by the way which we'll link to below and you can buy off his website yeah Black Holes the New Paradigm is the one that uh, really describes this mm -hmm. but um, there if you actually look at it we we're a black hole now the thing is when you think about it at the beginning of the universe the Big Bang the it was a tiny tiny universe it was this, what they call Planck's radius which is this phenomenally small right uh, area the thing is, black holes are formed when mass gets to a critical density. When you get to that critical density, you're, you curve space-time to the point where it actually makes a, a totally sphere, spherical curve. And when you hit that critical mass, it becomes a black hole. And, they, and we've accomplished this, they've accomplished this in stars. As a matter of fact, in the center of galaxies, you have these supermassive black holes. Yeah, I've read about that. So, so the traditional idea of a black hole is there's this gigantic star that has such great mass that collapses in on itself to a point where... Presto, you have a, the light can no longer escape. And uh, at the, the centerpiece... And what you have is curvature of space-time. So the gravity is so strong that it actually warps space-time. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, and they, so you're saying that, now I'm talking about this on a stellar level, but you're talking about this on a universal level. On a universal level, because you think about it, they, they have finessed around the idea that the universe was incredibly dense at the Big Bang. Right. And, and, and it was contained in a very tiny area. So if you had all this energy and mass in a tiny area, the natural curvature, in other words, of, of, of that space-time has to be a black hole. They know that. They know that the, the formulas call for a, a universe to be a black hole. But they say it, it can't be because a black hole is supposed to be a death knell of mass. It, it, it's like a... A junk heap where everything enter, enters into, mm -hmm. but they're but in in a certain sense they're right for a black hole within our universe. But uh, I have I always assumed that it was a black hole because what makes it a universe? In other words, what makes all of that goes on in the experiences that we have and every every other matter and energy has in this universe, what makes it a universe? In other words, what makes it separate from the rest of infinity, the infinite everything? Well, the last time we talked, you said there were two things that make a universe, right? Two. One is like the laws that govern that universe, basically, right? Like the... Well, I said, I said basically the two things were you have to have existence. Right. And then you have to have observation of that existence. Okay. Now, the thing is, that existence is what makes it a universe. The thing is, we have... So if it's just a black hole just sitting there, there's no universe. Or there is, but it's a really tiny, dense universe. Exactly. Now, the event that causes the Big Bang has expanded to the point where 14 point... I'm sorry, thir, I always get that wrong. 13.789 13. 13. Seven, nine, nine billion, billion years later, this is what we've got. Right. That's what we have. Okay. But all of that mass, everything that we can observe, everything in and beyond that even, is um, was in that point exactly that plaque that plank length everything at one time. The, the initial seed for this universe was in this incredibly small and they know there's a reason they know that and that was a black hole at the time like, why is it a, is it a black hole still well here's I'm going to digress a little bit I'm going to show you why they know what what the Big Bang was okay they know it because there's there's 
there's two, the two factors that I said to make of the universe. Number one is existence, and number two, the ability to observe that existence. Well, the existence, what made an existence was making it a contained entity. And to make it a contained entity was the curvature of space-time into a black hole at Planck's radius. Well, ironically, uh, the, the number way it observed its first event, which is what happened at the Big Bang, the Big Bang basically is the first event of the universe. The way right. it observed that first event was the first waveform. And the first waveform was also a Planck's radius. So in other words, at that location, there's that unique location. And here's what happens. What happens is... Now, we've talked about waveforms before, but just just to, so that we, if anybody's new to this particular discussion, a waveform is... A waveform is you have, you, know, you have different kinds of waveforms. You have waveforms of sound, and, and we're familiar with that. We're familiar. But when you look at the fundamental constituents of the universe, you have waveforms that are made by light, and light is basically a, you know, just a waveform, and uh, different lengths. A long waveform is a low energy light, a short waveform is a high energy light. For instance, a real long wave, waveform would be like, like radio waves. Uh, and then if you get into uh, very short, you get into... X-rays. You get vi visible is this really tiny part. If you have a spectrum like this, the visible light spec part of the spectrum that we see okay. is just here. And then you know, the lower end, the long waves, you have infrared and then ultraviolet. And then you get up into... X-rays and the ultimate is gamma rays, which are very, very high energy wave. So, but it all started with one waveform, right as the Big Bang happens. Big right? Bang, and they know the Big Bang's radius because at that, because let's digress again. Matter also has waveforms. It was the De Broglie, Louis De Broglie, uh, discovered that matter travels in waveforms. Now, what happens? There's a like there, there's a both we have containment of the universe and the containment of the universe is general relativity gravity's containment of the universe makes it a universe okay. so at the big bang you had the containment which was the universe became this tiny 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 black hole is what, what made it but then you also had the first waveforms now the thing is for for a black hole the more mass you have the larger the radius Okay, that makes sense. If we made the Earth a black hole, if you crushed it into the density to make a black hole, it'd be 0.88 centimeters. Okay. It'd be this big. Gotcha. Like a P. Exactly. But if you made the Sun a black hole, it'd be three kilometers. Okay. Or, so it's, you know, just about two, over, you know, around two miles. And that's a factor of its mass. Because, well, what happens is you increase the mass, the radius of the black hole increases proportionally. This is only so close these particles can get together. Exactly. There's like a limit. It's kind is of that the Planck limit as well? Is that not in this limit? case. That's it, a different it's, limit. It's a Schwarzschild limit. Schwarzschild limit. It, yeah, it's Carl okay. after, named after so Carl Schwarzschild who followed Einstein. That's where the Schwarzschild radius comes from. Well, the Einstein, that's, that's what we're talking about. The, the strange thing about black holes is this. If you take the moon and put another moon and collect it together without making it any more dense, just two moons, and you say, okay, the radius will go from what the current radius of the moon to, does it double? No, the radius goes up. You're doubling, the, you're doubling the, the, the volume, doubling, but you're spreading that volume over the surface of the moon. So your radius goes to actually the cube root of two. In other words, you don't, it doesn't, the radius doesn't double. That's but geometry. It goes to the cube root of two. It's gotcha. just simple geometry. You gotcha. the cube root of, yeah. the, of, the, of the volume of stuff. I can almost yeah. get my mind around that. Okay. So it goes cube root of two. So it goes up by twenty eight percent. So you add, collect all the all the rest of the second moon and gather. Matter of fact, I have an animation that shows this, and it gathers it together, and the radius goes up like twenty eight percent, which is a cube root of two. Okay. So anyway, what happens? That's what happens to matter. But when you double the mass of a black hole, it's vent horizon, and that's how they measure the black hole. That's the point where light can no longer escape. The vent horizon doubles. So. You, You're the radius of the event. The, event horizon. the radius oh. of the event horizon. Okay, thank you. Even though the so the critical density becomes less. In other words, to make the the Earth a black hole, it's 0.88 centimeters. You're taking this this 10 to the 20 you know 26 kilograms and crushing it into that size. Right. But in the Sun's case, it doesn't take nearly 
uh, that kind of density to create it uh, to create a black hole. Okay. So so what happens is you get progressively less. Well, the Big Bang you need a ten to the ninety six kilograms per cubic meter to get it to make it a black hole. So you're saying black holes are not uniformly dense. No, the, the, the critical density to make the black hole. There's a critical hole. density to make a black hole, but, the, but some black holes are denser than others. Exactly, and that's oh. one of the reasons why the Earth will never, never be a black hole. But really large stars can get to that critical density. Because there's just not enough mass to make a black hole. And there's not enough mass to make a black hole. And, or with the sun, right? I mean, you know, theoretically, if something crushed it to that level, yeah. there's no force that we know that can crush it. To but that the level. sun's not large enough either, or, or it's massive not, it's enough. It's not massive, massive enough. enough. It's a difference. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's actually called a dwarf star, even though it's medium, It's considered like a medium size on the main sequence, if you plot them out. But, uh, but yeah, so it's these really big, massive stars that end up being black holes exactly. when they collapse. So what happens is that's that's one of the characteristics. Now, so we come back to the Big Bang. You have two characteristics to make a universe. One is the existence, and existence is, is it means that you're separating it from the infinite possibilities of what of, of everything, gotcha. of everything beyond anything we can even conceive of. So in some kind of theoretical like existence, there there are innumerable possibilities, you, but for whatever reason, one happens. And then that's when existence comes into being. So you must curve it into a space okay. that makes it a black hole. I mean, and so basically you create the unit one out of infinity. And what I mean by the unit one, the mathematics of one. Okay. The, the idea, by saying we have a universe, we have identified something separate from every other possibility. Okay. Uh, it's our universe, but it's a universe. But it becomes measurable at that point. It becomes in turn, it, it's measurable to itself. Right. And so the number one, that's existence. Existence is the containment of gravity through, the, through general relativity. Okay. Now, then the other aspect of existence is observation of that existence. Well, the observation of that existence comes from the first waveform. What happens is the Big Bang starts from this initial center point and it goes out one Planck radius and it looks back on what it just created. So it has that observation of itself. And then the second instant is another Planck radius increase, and it goes back out and looks inward. Now the surface area of that black hole, because we're talking about this event horizon, has gone from one, and it's a square, so it's, you, know, you, you have two radiuses, it goes to a square. Gotcha. So four. Gotcha. So anyway, so that's what's happened to it. So the thing is, you now have the two characteristics to make a universe. Existence and the observation. So it goes from being a P to being like a ping pong ball. Yeah. And then from a ping pong ball to a tennis ball, and then a basketball, and it just gets bigger. Yeah, absolutely, bigger. and it gets okay. bigger. Gotcha. So the thing is, we know that the density of the universe was so incredible but they don't say that the universe was a black hole. And uh, what did they say the universe was? Or did they well, have they just say I, I, that I, I, I'm, I've not heard a credible explanation for it's, when it's expanding. It doesn't make it a, it, it avoids the general relativity formulations. But the general relativity formulations are absolute in any about any in any reference frame. Right. So we've discussed this in a previous video. Your your uh, proposal says that. There, are, in your in your paradigm, there are no abrogations of general relativity. In inflation theory, there are. So, like like for instance, and we talked about Guth and the infl and inflation theory, which is a really interesting theory and very brilliant and accepted by some scientists, many scientists. Most but probably. but it does it it assumes that somehow the universe expands at a greater rate than the speed of light. Is that right? Yeah, but You're getting that right? Exactly. Okay. But at the same time, you don't have... So if the speed of light is, 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 is a barrier, whether or not it's variable, we talked about that in another video as well, it's still like the speed limit of the universe, whatever that speed happens to be at the time. Well, you actually, I wasn't going to go into this, but you, you, you actually have phrased a question that sets me up on what is the speed of light. Right. Uh, speed of light is the... the, the, the it's number one, it's the growth rate of the universe, but it's the level of experience of the universe. It's the rate of experience. In other words, experience happens uh, you know, from here to the end of the universe, but something 
measures that or something calibrates that how fast does that occur okay well there is a speed of light and, and I can give it to you I can tell you exactly what the speed of light was in digital terms in other words I can give you the just numerical I mean we're, we're talking about digital we, we, we use the speed of light we talk about miles per second kilo, you know, kilometers per second whatever right. those are those are human human units right so, so that we can relate to them but let's let's just talk about it just digitally, going back to the old zeros and ones. Okay. So what is what is what is the speed of light? Well, the speed of light was basically the first instant, the first event, was one unit of space, which is expanded one unit of space, and the observation in one unit of time. Well, the, we already talked about the first expansion. Well, the next move moves out one more Planck radius. Right. Now the radius is two. Right. Well, the surface area is a square. You know, the sur- you know, areas are squares and volume is a cube. So the surface area is a square. So now the surface area is four. A, okay. When you mean square, you mean mathematical square, not a... Mathematical yeah, square. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a, a sphere. A sphere. Right. I just want to clarify that. So what happens now, you have a, a, a surface area of four. Well, the thing is, you the velocity of light is the change in radius versus the change in the surface area, which is the time. Time is a surface experience because you experience it because the, the surface is the present moment. So the surface area is the event horizon, actually, in a black hole. So the present moment, you've expanded from a surface area of one to a surface area of three. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, gotcha. So as that expands. We are being carried along with that expansion on the surface of this event horizon, and that's our now. That's our experience. If we were able to, we could look back along that radius. That would be the past. Exactly. But you know, we get to the velocity of light. The velocity of experience. The surface area is the total experience of the universe in its whole history. But but the the ongoing the, the change in experience. Is the it's gone from one to a total experience from from a surface area of one to a surface area of four, so now the whole experience in the universe is four, but the but you you've only changed three. In other words, you, you your surface area in the first instant was one. Now you're four, and, and one of those four was the first experience. You know, in other words, the Big Bang itself. So okay. now you've had a change of three. Just because of the it's geometry a delta, of like sphere. the delta of three, you've you've had a change in the surface area. It's it's um, three. It's now a surface area of four. So the so what the change in the radius is one because you've gone up one Planck unit. Okay. And the surface area is now surface area. The change in surface area is three. Well, we're really talking about dimensions here, right? Right. This you're, is you're talking, talking about straight like, geometry. When you're talking about like the radius, you're talking about a one-dimensional thing. Right. When you're talking about the the surface of the sphere, now you're talking about a three-dimensional thing. Exactly. Okay. Well, well, the thing is, what has happened? But the surface area is a square. So what happens is the change is the square root of the change, and the square root of uh, the change the change is three. So now this, the, the the square root of the change is the square root of three. So that the Big Bang, the rate, the velocity of light, which is the experience rate was one over the square root of one. Now the surface area is four, mm-hmm. and we've changed a three, so the, the velocity of light goes from one over the square root of one to one over the square root of three. Okay. And then the next expansion, it goes out to a radius of three. Mm-hmm. Square, square three. You get so the speed nine. of light's increasing all the time. It goes to nine. Well, then what happens then, the velocity of light has gone, we've changed from a surface area of four to, the, to nine, because we're now three, three, three squared, uh, and that is a change of five units. So now the velocity of light is one over the square root of nine, and then it goes to four, which is sixteen. And now that's now, and the difference between nine and sixteen is seven. It goes to one over the square root of seven, then one over the square root of nine. For each unit, one over the square root of 11, it goes to these odd numbers. Okay. The square root of those numbers. Now, that's the velocity. That's changing very rapidly from yeah. the Big Bang. Yeah. Well, now... Is it still changing? It's still changing. But now, it's changing slower. But now right? it's changing slower because we have a radius. Where the radius of the universe is velocity of light times the age of the universe, which is 1.3 times 
10 to the 26 meters. So now we increase one plank radius, but we're, we're starting with one 10 to the 26 meters. Now, and 10 to the 26 meters is plank radius, turn it to back to the only units that, that are natural unit is a plank radius. Mm -hmm. Meters is not a natural unit. Natural right. unit is plank radius. Now there's 10 to the 60th, 60 zeros plank radius. So when you move out one more radius and you get a 10 to the 60th new events forming each plank radius move. I see. So now it's one over 10 to the six, the square root of 10 to the 60th, which is 10 to the 30th. And you end up with a, a velocity of light that is one, that is, and sorry about getting into the technical numbers, one over 10, 10 to the 30th of what it was at the Big Bang. So that's so, how it's changed. It's actually regimented in the mathematics of of uh, of ge simple geometry. Right. So so basically, at the beginning of the universe, there are a limited number of possibilities. But as the universe expands, since that surface area becomes so large, and the numbers that you were using. Um, becomes so great, there are so many opportunities for things to happen on the surface that it's, it's, a, it's a de facto increase in complexity is what exactly. you're basically talking about, and possibilities. The universe increases, da, 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 it's one ten to the 30th, Every, it's, it's an incremental 10 to the 30th, and there's a reason for that. It's the harmonics of the surface area, the event horizon, and the black hole. And that's the plank up, length? It goes up one plank length at a, at a time. And that has to do with basically an analogy maybe to, to sound? Well, it's very similar because it, it's the harmonics of the surface area, the event horizon of the, of the universe's black hole. Does this have anything to do with Simple the Simple harmonics, the it goes in intervals. The... Simple, well, same thing with an atom. You have, you have discrete uh, energy levels for for the uh, for the uh, electrons orbits around the atom. Right. Well, you basically have discrete energy levels, and they work in, in harmonics of, of Planck's length on the surface area of the universe's uh, event horizon. Is this in any way? I'm just taking a stab here. Is there? Is this in any way related to like the um, wavelength that we detect the cosmic background radiation at, or is that completely? Different. Well, it's 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 a relevant it's a relevant uh, um, relevant that the wavelength wavelength increases and then that what the cosmic background radiation does is the wavelengths increase um, basically eleven hundred fold from the from that time. Um, so yes, but in this case we're kind of talking about well, wavelengths. Wavelengths so, are the key for communication of information in the universe. Okay, gotcha. And, and so it's, whether it's the information, the surface area of the event horizon is the total information that's ever been generated by the universe, all experience, and I mean all experience in, in a quantum level. Right, and zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. Collapse or not collapse. But anyway, so we have, we're really just trying to establish the universe as the black hole. Okay. And it's, and it, and it's the black hole's uh, absoluteness that makes the universe an absolute. Uh, it makes its existence absolute. It makes its uh, its its end and its experience um, absolute in one sense that it that it will happen and it's contained within the universe. Now, quantum mechanics determines what that experience is. Okay. Quantum mechanics says, well, we have so many events to create, but we can create them in all these different ways because every Planck increase, we get ten to the sixtieth events that get get generated. Right. Now, the question is where those events get generated and how they get generated right. are are all part of the probabilistic at nature right. of the universe. Gotcha. And that's and that's what makes experience unique in all, in all circumstances. Because it's not absolute. That's probability. And it takes us, but but this this model takes us away from some of the some of the you know spurious um, theories that say yeah you don't every, have the same every problems. Event, every event creates a new universe. Yeah, you don't have any of those problems because the new universe multiverse. needs that containment. Right. So anyway, the, the universe is contained. So we've got we've gone. We'll, we'll leave that go for now. Now the question is, what makes our experience in this universe what it is? And this is really, really interesting. Uh, when I first started looking at general relativity and how, how it works, we realized that gravity is so incredibly strong near a black hole mm -hmm. that it curves light. 
uh, and they proved it when they, that was how they actually improved it. Uh, was it Eddington, I think, who did his experiments? Sir Arthur Eddington. Yeah, Sir Arthur Eddington back in was it, 1919, I think it was. But there was a black, there was an eclipse of the earth, a turbine, the light curved around the sun. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is the curvature becomes extreme. The light curves around the earth to a tiny, tiny degree. Good lights, you know. But it, the light's very little affected by the gravity of the earth. But right. If you get the gravitational density sufficient, the light will curve. And what's cool is, light will orbit a black hole. Now, it's a very tenuous orbit. It, it, it's, it's very unstable. So it usually, it, it happens, in, you know, periodic. It happens, but it immediately uh, dissolves afterwards. Is that because the um, inflow of matter into the black hole, and black hole's accreting and it has more mass, and therefore it pulls well, light that, in? Well, that's, it, no, well, the, the, the tenuous orbit, let's say there's no, no accretion of matter, but the tenuous orbits, it can go either way. I mean, it's just like cause it, it's like pushing a pencil that's very tenuous. <laughs> you, know, you don't know if it's going to go one way or the other. Okay. If you're trying to balance a pencil, and, and, but it's like that. So, but anyway, some light will orbit uh, a, a black hole. Gotcha. But where does it orbit? It orbits at one and a half times the event horizon. It doesn't well, orbit at the event horizon. Not the event horizon. One and a half times. Because the event horizon is where light cannot escape. Okay. And and the. Because the gravity is so you know so massive that you know, what it does is it stretches light's wavelength to an infinite length. Okay. So it, it's in effect it's black. That's why they call it black. What? But light will orbit a a black hole one and a half times the event horizon. See, that's interesting because I always thought that the black hole was black because that's where the surface of the black hole was, but it's not. It's where the light disappears. And the actual surface is below that area. You could be below that one and a half yeah. margin and shine a light, and you can see the light. Right now, it's going to be redder than it was when it left the light. Yeah, but it, but you it would you would be able to see the light. Hmm. But light orbits. Now, let's say let's say you're at that one and a half margin. Okay. And let's say you were able to stand, which you can't because the pressure yeah. pressures and the gravity well, are so massive. People but let's say you were thing. able to stand there with a space suit so and you have a red light on your back. And if the black hole is small enough, uh, you could look straight ahead and see the see the, the red light on your back. Right. And so that means light's gone from your back, orbited around, and gone to your eyes. Sure. So what happens is, I, I thought about this, and this is my thought experiment. I said, well, what happens, what do you see when you're at that level? When you're at that one and a half margin? Well, you'll see your starscape up above you, which will be, will be half your field of view, because anything below that straight orbit to you is coming from below that orbit, which means it's coming from the black hole, uh, and they're coming from the direction of the black hole. So right. When you're at that one and a half margin, the black hole looks completely flat. You don't see the curvature of the black hole right. from that vantage point. Black hole looks completely flat because you'll see, so your field of view will have black hole in the, uh, below here and starscape above here. Now, if you come down below that. It's like being in Kansas at night. See, light starts, light orbits here, but below that light starts, to, in the black holes here, light starts to curve inward. Right. So at that point, light's curving inward, and what does that mean for what's your field of view? What what happened below that? What happens is the stars escape starts to close up. Right. And that and so what replaces what replaces that? Well, the black hole starts to roll up around you. It's really really. Like the black hole physically rolls around you. That well, doesn't make any sense. Well, visually. Yeah, visually. See, I've understood that like eventually like you'll see like a closing circle of light above you as you descend further into the black hole. But when, but when you get to light, though, it's a little bit different than we think of. It's not like sitting on a lake surface. Right. You sit on a really smooth lake uh, you'll, and you get right at the lake, you know, in the water and your eyes looking, everything's oh, flat. Okay. And it looks like it's, it's flat. Like, but there's still, mask a little, on or something. still a little bit of curvature. Sure. In this case... The direction of light becomes the straight line. It actually becomes it because light travels at the what they call the null, null geodesic. But anyway, it's, it it is whatever light indicates is straight because it is the fastest velocity possible. Hmm. So what happens is you go down below that 
level, the universe starts to fold up around you to the point where you get to the actual event horizon where light can no longer escape. The only access to the event horizon is directly vertical. You cannot get to the event horizon at an angle. You cannot go at an angle like this. You can only go directly into the event horizon. Okay, and what happens? All life's curving. Now, wherever the event horizon is, light can come from different areas of the universe. Whatever its final access to the event horizon is, is, is vertical. So what is the view from the event horizon? Imagine it's blinding white light. Well, well, that's true. That's the other aspect. We're, we'll get to that in a little bit later. But what happens is the entire universe, the starscape, squeezes off to a single point. Right. I mean, literally a point. Now, normally, light comes to you in a plane. You know, it's a curved plane, but sure. it comes to you in a plane. All right. It comes to you in a plane. But now, you've taken that plane and made it a single point. You've So, what's replaced that? Well, the black holes rolled up around you. Hmm. Wherever you are at the event horizon, the black hole visually and in real sense is rolled up around you. Hmm. So what's happened is that's what black holes do. They change dimensions. They've taken that dimension of space outside and they moved it inside because you're looking at the black hole, you're looking in, you're basically looking at inside the black hole. Now hmm. it's black at this point. But it's still, you're looking at the black hole. So it's not the surface of the black hole, it's the inside of the black hole. Yeah, and the reason, there's a reason for this. You're, you're actually, your infall rate, your mandatory infall rate is the velocity of light. Okay. Now the velocity of light goes down to zero, which is kind of a real, a real interesting, interesting point. But, the, but there's a, relative to the outer universe, velocity goes to zero. But it's interesting. There's something... I'm going to go to special relativity now rather than general relativity. Special relativity says if you're traveling very rapidly in a spaceship, let's say, what happens is there's something called the headlight effect. What happens is objects forward of you start to squeeze off in a, in a, you know, squeeze off to a smaller and smaller aperture. Uh, for instance, objects, let's say you're passing at this moment, you have light coming in from from here well by the time the light gets to you the light's going to be coming that light's a, a waveform that light is going to come to you from more from an angle actually behind you if you're going very very high speed the light ends up being angled towards you or, you know coming to your spaceship from behind i'm talking about original angle of the lights 90 degrees okay it's going to be viewed at some angle towards your rear, because you're so the only way the point at which you would have exactly, and, and it will be what we call red shifted. The light will be yeah, have lower energy. That well, what happens is the effect is light is focused more and more to your front. So if you are, so what happens is they call the headlight effect. So I'm not sure I get that. So if I'm traveling and there's light that. If I'm traveling at say 70 miles an hour, it would it would intersect with my my vehicle like at a right angle. But since I'm going near the speed of light, why wouldn't it just miss me? Well, what happens is the light that that means that the waveform is going to be curved. Okay, you're moving so forward. I'm curving space time in my craft right. as I'm well, moving that fast. Get, the light get, does get to you. So you're looking when you're looking out there, the light does get to you. Now we're getting into some pretty complicated stuff. With yeah, that well, special relativity. Okay, but the net. Let's just stay with it. Let's stay with the okay. idea. You get the headlight effect. Sure. What happens is if you go the velocity of light, all you see is directly in front of you, uh, and and you can only if you're going at the velocity of light, which you can't travel in a spaceship that fast, all you see is very very bright directly in front of you, mm -hmm. and and what's happened is the behind you has rolled up towards your front. And the only place that, and so that's like the black hole, because what happens is what behind you, you're moving away from it, so the light waves get stretched and stretched and stretched. So it's like black hole being rolled up around you. It's very similar to that kind of thing. The, the, your light from the rear gets rolled up around you, and your front, you get a very, very intense light. Okay. The, on the event horizon of the black hole, that's this light. You have, a, you have light coming from above, and it's very intense. Yeah. But the rest of the black holes are rolled up around you. Gotcha. So anyway, I can do we don't want to take with that. But what we're really talking about here to explain the universe 
is we're going from the fact that we're talking about a black hole within this universe to where actually we are a universe. Right. So a universe totally different black idea. Hole. Well, not totally different. It connects. And here's the connection. Black holes move a dimension of space from outside to in. Outside what? Outside the event horizon. Good question. To inside the event horizon. Okay. So we exist on the surface of a black hole. So you're saying that the on the third dimension is not there. It's 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 the, it's two dimensions at that point. Well, outside. What's happened is we've moved a dimension from outside. That's what black holes do. They, they, when you move at the velocity of light, you're switching dimensions. It's a dimension shifting experience. We're moving dimensions and we're moving space. Now the thing is, we still have four dimensions. So you say, well, we're inside the black hole. Everything looks like it's two dimensional, right? Looks like it's flat. Is that because of that dimensional shift? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's just a perception. What I'm saying is this. We exist on, a, on a, a, an event, the event horizon. Okay. Uh, but what we see is inside our universe's black hole. Oh, I see. What's happened is... So that folding up effect is what we're looking at when we look at the night sky. What, exactly. We exist on the event horizon of a black hole. Now, we're not talking about a black hole within our universe where, where you have black rolled up around you. Right. We're on the surface area where you have the universe, our universe is rolled up around us, our point on the surface of the event horizon of the black hole. Does this have anything to do with the theories that the universe is shaped like a saddle? Is that, uh, does it have anything to do with that? That's, that's whether it's an open universe or a closed universe. It's a little different. It's different. A little different, but... You're going the right way. But the thing is, if you look at it this way, how do we know that the universe is rolled up around us? I don't know. Can well, we test for that? There's there's a logic test. And here's the logic test. Uh, how do we know we added a dimension inside the, inside the universe? Well, the, the, probably the best example I have is this. We now have deep space views with Hubble Telescope and... and, um, and and other methods. We, okay. we know of distant galaxies that are, and we look into the distance, we're looking into the past. And what is the past? Well, it's, and so we're looking at these galaxies that are, but we can look at them down here, down there, everywhere we look around from wherever our telescope is located, uh, we can see that these distant, we can see back 10, 11 billion, maybe even 12 billion uh, years ago. Okay. Very close. You know, getting pretty close to the Big Bang, or and Two or the cosmic, the yeah, exactly. Yeah. But let's say, where did all the galaxies we're looking at, or the you know cosmic background radiation itself, where did it come from? Well, it's my understanding the background cosmic or the cosmic background radiation is an echo of the Big Bang. So it is. that's as far back as we look, right? Exactly. But the big, they all came from the Big Bang. Everything we see comes from the Big Bang. Sure. So, the, the Big Bang was a single point. It was this point, this size. Right. It was this tiny. Right. Well, where is the Big Bang? Is it there? Because that galaxy came from the Big Bang. Yeah, I've always wondered. That galaxy over there came mm -hmm. from the Big Bang. Sure. That galaxy over there, the one over there came from the Big Bang. Right. They all came from the Big Bang. So, where's the Big Bang? Right. It's It's there, there, there. There, there. So the Big Bang yeah. is this ethereal shell that's right. moving away from us at the velocity of light. So we have, Big Bang was a single point. Right. We took a dimension from outside the universe, rolled it into the universe, and made that Big Bang a surface area. It's a, vol it's a surface area. We've added a dimension to the surface area. I'm not following. So, so how did, how... Yeah. Okay, so, now the, the Big Bang is a point. Start off the point. Okay, so that's one When we dimension. see it, if we can see it, yeah. we know its existence is a plane, it's a curved plane of moving away from us. Curved plane. Curved plane. Does, so two plane, dimensions. Plane sounds like, yeah, it's, it's two dimensions. Okay. Because it has two, two dimensions, and, and those two dimensions are you could draw... You could draw squares in space. You know the squares, Big Bang's over there, Big Bang. You know, but it's all, but it's the furthest thing you have away from us that can be conceptually, you know, mentally observed. So we're somewhere inside a sphere, looking out at the surface of a sphere. And the edge of that sphere is the, is big the cosmic bang. background is the, radiation. No, it's the Big Bang itself. But 
we can only see as far we back. We can only see as far back. We can only detect radiation as far back as the, exactly. that. Exactly. But beyond that, you're saying is the Big Bang. Is the Big Bang. But there's no way for us to test for that. The Big Bang, you can probably get earlier neutrinos probably originated before the cosmic, you know, it probably okay. came from some of the earlier experiences, probably penetrated. So if we know, got really some, good at detecting neutrinos, maybe someday yeah, possibly. But, but you won't know the source. I don't think we'll ever be able to fine tune that. But okay. anyway, gotcha. we know that conceptually, everything was created by the Big Bang. Right. And where's the Big Bang? It's all the way around. So this, we've added a dimension okay. to that surface area that's moving yeah. away from us. That makes sense. All right, now, so what are we looking at when we look at those galaxies? Well, we're looking at objects that are moving away from us or whatever, or they could be stable like looking across this room. Yeah. But where everything you see is the past. Yeah. So what we're observing is the past. We're not observing the future. We're not observing the, the present. We're observing the past. As I said, one of the characteristics of it makes it a universe is to be able to observe yourself. Well, this is how the universe observes itself. It observes through light and any energy communication. I see. It observes itself. So the pattern of that galaxy, which existed 10 billion years ago, that Hubble is picking up, is preserved in the light that has been emanated from that galaxy. Even though that galaxy, in real time, in our present time, doesn't exist anymore. The second characteristic that makes it a universe is observation of itself. And, so light and is, it observes on the current event horizon. Yeah. It observes events of the past. So what do we, we know the past. We know it's XYZ axis of Euclidean geometry. Right. And uh, then it's also... And then time. It's, it's time because we're observing things in the past. It's how much time it took the light to get to right. it. Right. So how far in the past is it? Well, we can say it's in seconds, but seconds we're really referring to distance. We're referring to distance exactly. You know, like a you know something can be so many nano, you know, nanoseconds away from us, or we can sun is eight light minutes away from us. Right. We can measure it in meters, but we're compare what we're doing is we're really converting time, time and in, distance in, into from speed of light into distance. Right. Now you can look at you know the nearest star, you know, the nearest stars or whatever. You may, but then you see those galaxies are ten billion years in our past. Right. So we're looking at the past. So our three dimensions of space and one dimension of time because time is depth. It's like you have a sphere. Right. How how far? It's how, a great way to put it. How we're the center of the sphere and how far away? Sure. Are those events? And uh, whether we observe them or we they're still they're still in our past. So. That's what we see. Yes. Well, the question is, but we're seeing the past. Yeah. But we're seeing the past in the present. In our present, not in its our present. Present. Because where we are is we're in our present. Right. And so what does that what does that mean? Okay, well how do we see what is the present? Well, there's a universal present in the universe. That's one thing that unifies everything. The unifies the physics of the universe is that we have a common radius from what? The Big Bang. Right. The Big Bang is the center of the universe. Right. Big Bang is that point. Now, I say it's a spherical around us, but in reality, we've taken a dimension that was the center of the universe because everything's radiated from around the Big Bang. But wherever you are in the event horizon, because of that switch of dimensions, the that whole universe, even though it's a center point and we're on the surface of a, of a, of a real sphere, right. we've we've actually taken that universe and rolled it up around us right. It's in the way it is. But it's more than just conceptually, individually, it's actual reality. Our reality is we are in the center of our universe. So our present... It's an ironic. The real center of the universe is the Big Bang. Yeah. But ironically, we're the center of where our universe. Wherever we are, we're the center of that universe. But that... But that t that universe is... I mean, that, that our present is locked in time by the relative positions of everything else around us. I mean, it's it's the expansion. So any particular moment has is a factor of where and how far the universe has expanded at any given moment. Right? Exactly. In, in, you can measure exactly. it in radius. You can talk about it in terms of time, but it's basically the same thing. It's the same thing. And and it it's the because it's the nature of black holes where you, you measure a black hole 
if you're if can, the way they currently look at it, and, and I've adjusted this, if you fell into a black hole, theoretically you go to uh, you go to crush to a singularity in the center, and it takes so long to get there. So you have a black hole that's uh, we from outside is thirty light years across or radius. Yeah. Uh, it takes 20, 20 years to go from a thirty year. It takes two thirds the time of the what we would measure from outside to actually get into the central singularity. But right, I, I and that's that, not the I same singularity as the electronic singularity. I say that uh, it's not the, the singularity. That's, a, that's is really, a structure of a black hole. That's the center of the black hole. The center of the black hole really is the Big Bang. But the point is, my gotcha. my my whole point is. The real, the, the real way black holes work is you don't get through the event horizon. Right. That's the point of action. That's where you stop. But we're not. We're gonna. We're gonna stay away from that for the moment. We're okay. trying to talk about this change of dimensions. Right. Okay. What happens is you observe everything around us. Because I said the, the the key is the universe has to be able to observe itself. So how do you observe it? You observe it in the present. So in the present, we're observing the universe. Yeah, where else can you well, observe? light comes from that wall over there, hits your retina. There, you know, there's an exchange. Observation is the exchange of mass and energy creates events. Observe the creation of events. Events are created in the present. We live on the event horizon. We, can, the, we look at a black hole. It's where we can no longer observe events. It's called the event horizon. When we are the black hole, we, the event horizon is where all events are created. So that's literally the meaning term. of event horizon is that you can't see over the horizon, so you cannot see any more events that's, beyond it. That's where you can't see them. But in reality, it's the perfect word for what we live on. Yeah. We live where events are created. Right. And we live in the present. And that's the present. And we observe events of the past. They meet the retina, and you have a cascade of events. So if you look it, down the singularity, is that the past or the future? The path, the this, the singularity, for our universe is the Big Bang. So if I look up from the from the event horizon and I see that closing pattern of stars, is that's the past. This is the past. If I look down into the singularity, that's you are the future. Down, you're looking down in the future. No, the singularity is everywhere. Ah, remember the singularity is the singularity around. is the black stuff around the, the star field because no, that's, that's the interior that's, of the black hole. No, no, no you're, okay, we're we're talking about. We, we want to. You have to separate. Are we talking about a universe, a black hole within our universe? Or are we talking about being the universe, black hole? They're not the same thing. The black hole makes containment of our universe. Black hole contains our experience. Okay. It makes everything interconnected. The universal black law, black. second law, thermodynamics. Everything's interconnected in this. This our experience, which is our universe, mm. which is our universal black hole. Okay. Okay. So now we're talking about our universal black hole. We're talking about originally we're talking about how black holes switch dimensions, and how they do it. And we can do that by observing a black hole within our universe. Now we're talking about how being a black hole universe, what that switching of dimensions means. Mm. What that switching of dimensions means is this. You're on. You're you're observing objects, and observe objects. Light goes to you, hits your retina. Retina has a chemical electrochemical reaction. It exchanges mass and energy. Right. Then that gets sent by continual cascade of change of mass and energy. Then it goes to the then it goes to the brain and finds the pattern that recognizes what that object is. Okay. And then you mentally have to respond to it. So a cascade of tons of events just on any light hitting your retina. Right. So the, then so that. Those are events, but those events are created as that in that is an exchange of mass and energy. Now, how is mass and energy exchanged? From the ultimate formula yeah, of all time, e equals mc e squared. Equals MC They're squared. interchangeable, right? They're changed through e equals mc squared. Right. So, what is c squared? It's a velocity squared, right? Yeah. It's a velocity of light squared, but so it's a unique velocity. So what it is, so it's the velocity of light squared. Well, what is velocity of light? Well, it's distance over time. If you square it, it's distance over time times distance over time. So you have two dimensions of distance, two dimensions of time. So what is two dimensions of space, distance would be space, and two dimensions of time? So what is the present? It's two dimensions of space and two dimensions of time. Where's the third dimension? Well, it's still four dimensions. What? It's four dimensions, right? No. Two of space yeah. and two of time. Two of time. 
Two of time. What do you mean two of time? C How do you have two dimensions of time? C squared. I don't understand. Well, I know. We're not there yet. You will understand. We're observing. Oh, they understand. We're observing the past okay. in the present. That's two times. Past observed in the present. I see. That's two times. So you're saying, yeah, but that's just like semantics, right? No. Yeah. I mean, I'm it's, looking it's at C starlight, square, but the starlight has reached me. So yeah. that's in my present. It's in my present relativistic frame time. That's time right. Frame. So you're combining the two. You're combining the past and the present. But it's just the present. You're observing the past and the present. I'm observing a reflection of the past, but the light is here now, it, so it's it, in it's my present. It's not semantics because it's the exchange of mass. The present, what is the present? The present is the generation of events. Yeah. Events are generated. In the present. It are generated with C squared. Okay. And that's two dimensions of space and two dimensions of time. Remember, you're observing the past. When you, when we think that what we live in is is what we see and what we observe. Yeah, the eternal now. Yeah, but, well, we're observing in the eternal now. But right. the actual present is the creation of events. Now, so that's two dimensions of space. Right, stay with me on this. I'm trying. Two dimensions of space and two dimensions of time. Okay. Now, well, what is the future? I'm going to carry this one more step. We took a dimension from outside the universe and put it in. The future is future radius of the black hole. We're right. expanding so What out. we're expanding into. We're expanding what we're expanding into. Or what we're going to be when it expands that far. That's the future. That's right. So you can't see the future because exactly. it hasn't happened yet. The future is one dimension of space and three dimensions of time. The future exists now in our one dimension of space. What is the future? Well, you exist wherever you are, wherever you are on our surface of this universal black hole, wherever matter is, it ages. The future comes to you. You don't have to move to it, it comes. You can move, but it, but it comes to you. The future comes to you. But the future is one dimension of space, because wherever you are, you age. And three dimensions of time. And we're not talking about semantics. We're talking about formulas and everything else related to it. The future is three dimensions of time. What do you mean three dimensions of time? Yeah, I, have, I have no concept of how that's How does it even make sense? sense? How does yeah, it even make sense? I don't even know what that well, means. What is the time dimension? That's, that's what you really come down to. Yeah. So we still have four dimensions. There are only four dimensions. And there's just exchange. You know, you exchange for three dimensions of space inside the black hole and one dimension of time, which is depth. The surface of the black hole is you have two dimensions of space, two dimensions of time because you're creating events. The future are events that haven't been created yet, but it, but those events come to you through three times. Now, let's show what those three times are. Well, the past only has one dimension of space or time. One dimension of time means that what affects the past? Only the past affects the past. So. The only dimension that matters is, you know, events in the past affected the past. Only the past affects the past. You cannot affect the past in the present. Can't change the past. Can't change the past. The past can change the past. Past, what? Well, you can't change it to us because we're in the present. <laughs> and we can't, the past cannot change in our, from our vantage point on the event horizon of the black hole. Now, in the event horizon of the black hole, the present is affected by events in the past. You change because of events you see. You change because you move. Oh, I said, uh, you said, How about that? You, you change your position or sure. move, whatever. See something from that, so you so dodge. You're, you're, yeah, dodge. Whatever happens in the present is affected by events of the past. Okay. The energy of the past affects the present. How about that? The future is affected by events of the past, events that are occurring now, and events that haven't occurred yet affect the future. There are three times that affect the future. Hmm. And, they, and the future comes to you wherever you are on the surface of the black hole. Now you can move on that surface of the black hole, but wherever you are, you're moving vertically outward to different, to, to high radiuses. Wherever you are on the surface of the black hole, your singular point of occupation on the surface of the black hole is unique to every piece of you is one location on the surface of the so black So you don't hole. move in sideways or up and yeah, down? Yeah, you can. You just move. Well, you don't move down. up and down on the surface of the yeah. black hole. The right. black hole horizon moves out. Right. It just moves out. We, were, we coast on the horizon yeah. of the black hole. Okay. Now, our, but, you know, the forces so and everything else... So space, though, 
your point. Your 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 single every point. Every point of your three dimensional body exists on that same surface. It's the same distance from the being. Let's take a, take another way to look at it. Yeah. Um, if you look at where do we exist, we establish the Big Bang as the center of the universe. We exist at radius X at this, let's say at 12, 12 noon. Mm -hmm. We exist at whatever X is, whatever that distance is from the Big Bang. Okay. That's where we've expanded that's velocity of light, we take the time, the age at yeah. that moment okay. to that point. Well, one second later, X plus one. It's X plus one. Second, second times the velocity of light, which is, is easier, 300,000 kilometers per second. So we're 300,000 kilometers distant from that, uh, that point that we were before. Okay, I don't buy that. So that event is in the past by 300,000 kilometers away. Okay. Now, we don't see that. Right. We don't see it's 300,000 kilometers. But it is. It's like this. You're traveling down the road in a car and you're going, let's say, uh, 60 miles an hour, which is 88 feet per second. And you're, you're sitting there, and uh, you, you have you know, Tara sitting next to you in the car, uh, and you throw her a map. And it takes a half second to get from there to there. Well, the car's traveled 44 feet, but to you, it's just gone this little distance. So the thing is, though, you, let's say the, the roadway is the time that's gone by since you know where, where real space has expanded during that period of time. In this okay. case, you've gone 44 feet. So in reality, the map went way out here in this little curve to get to get to Terra, who's sitting next to you. And, but to you, it's just here to here. We coast on the event horizon of the black hole. It's it's we're coasting, and you don't if you if you had no vibration, no windows, and anything else. You wouldn't, it would just be this, 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 that. The fact that the car is moving means nothing. Right. Well, that's because, where we are. We, yeah. we can't feel the expansion of the no, universe. Yeah, it's our relative position. Because our mass coasts with the momentum of the expansion. Right. So the thing is, we, you don't see that, you don't feel that. Right. So that's what's happening, that's what's happening in our, in, in our experience. So we coast with the horizon. So we're always on the event horizon. It's, it's mandatory. There's no, no option. So we're always, because that's where all matter exists. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, now what is the nature of that? So we, the past we're looking at, you're looking at that wall or whatever, that's... In the past. It, it, based on where we really exist now, it's, it's 300,000 kilometers away, or you know, or, you know, more than that, how many seconds, or whatever fraction of a second it took to get here. Okay. That has moved into the past. Well, we keep moving outward, just like the roadway moves moves behind the car and coastal it moves away from you. Okay. So what we live is we live three dimensions of of or four dimensions total. They just shift. And black holes shift them from outside to inside the black hole. Outside is the future because the black hole is expanding. Inside is the past where we're moving away from it. And the present is we exist is where we are always because we're coasting with the mass of the universe. So the thing is, let's take a look at what that means. We can observe, why do we, okay, we have one dimension of space in the past. And we can say, let's just talk about an experience. Let's say you had to get up for an appointment uh, you know, sure. a week ago. Sure. And so, so I had the appointment, it was nine o'clock on, let's say, last Thursday. And uh, I had to get up um, so I had at that time I had you know I had a plan I had to get set the alarm the night before so I had to go back further in the time past or you can go you can go back and forth mentally no we're not talking about actually physically going there because you would exist in the present but mentally you can say I, you can go in the distant past or move forward from the past yeah the memory but you can talk about you can assess the past you yeah. can assess what you've done in okay. the past which is history and regret. I can, and look, at my, I can look at my experience. Exactly. Look okay. at your experience. You're, you know, you're, you're, so you're saying the universe can do that too? Everything can do that. Sure. Okay, great. It's I aging. That. That's, that's part of that's aging. what the past is. That's what aging is. Okay. Matter does it through aging. It carries its past with its aging. Nice. So what happens is, so that's what the past is. But the thing is, you can move back and forth in it. And the reason you can is, because you can say, well, I moved from this, I, I, I set the alarm in this room and I 
woke up in the bed over here. There are different locations in space where there's different locations in three dimensions of space with the past, when you observe the past. Yeah. Okay, so you can do that because there are odd dimensions. And what I mean by that, you take the three dimension of space as a cube. In the single dimension of time, it's an odd dimension. You can move back and forward because when you cube a number, you maintain the sign. When you have a, lot, a number to the first uh, order, then you, then you, have, uh, you, you also uh, maintain the sign. Well, the future, you can do the same thing in the future, except you're planning rather than assessing. You can say, well, I have to set the clock for this uh, to get up for that appointment. Uh, and I better, you can go backwards and forwards in planning where you want to be. Now, it's, it's, you're not there, but you're planning it. Okay. You're only at the event. Thinking about it. Anymore. Speculating. Sure. But the present, you can do that because you have three dimensions of time, which is an odd number of dimensions, and you cube a number. It's always maintained a sign. Mm -hmm. You can go forward in the future. You can plan more distant future, less distant future. You can go say, you know, you can plan your whatever, whatever it is. So the question becomes, the present is two dimensions of space and two dimensions of time. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, what does that mean? Well, two dimensions of anything, you square time, you get a positive number. You square a negative two, you get, you get a positive. Two negatives make a positive. You make a positive. You square the space, you get a positive. Yeah. You square the time, you get a positive. The present can only move forward because it's a square. Square of space and time. So it only can move forward. So you're talking about the arrow of time. You're talking about time arrow of time is forward. established by that. It and that's because only of move pluses and minuses. Exactly. Hmm. Time can only move forward. So that's a mathematical thing. <coughs> it is. That, see, the thing is, nothing can occur in this universe, including the planning and assessing and everything else we talked about, if it was not allowed for by the mathematics and the structure of the, in, the, in the physics of the universe. Gotcha. Even our imaginings have to be allowed for. Uh, Makes by, sense. By, sure. By the by the by the by actually the physics of the universe. Yeah. We think that it's outside of the physics. It's not. Everything we no, come I'm sure up it's with, explained by every rationale, physics. every yeah. reasoning, every dream, everything we have is a product of the physics. It was allowable by the physics of the universe. Otherwise, it couldn't occur. Right. That makes sense. And including all the esoteric stuff that we talk about. Sure. So the future, present. It's okay. You can watch. In our day, you know, so many people, Keystone Cops, you know, go, you know, you can watch a movie going backwards, and it looks absurd, you know it's absurd, you can see it, or you, and, and if you watch the movie going backwards, and you got younger while you're watching it, it's the same thing as watching it go forwards. That's what two negatives mean. If you make it two negatives, it's, it's like, or glass breaking. We know the idea of a glass coming back together is absolutely absurd. We know that it doesn't work. Yeah, I've seen that in science books before. But if, but if you break a glass and you get younger while, you, while the glass breaks, it's the same thing as it, not, as, it, as it going forward. I mean, in other words, if you see and you experience if both the observation and the experience, because the present is experience. Yeah, the experience the creation of events is experience. If you, if you observe things going backwards and the experience goes backwards, it's the same thing as going forward. So your mathematical formulas in your book explain all of this. Well, this is just this is just logic. Oh, okay, very good. It's just logic. logic. So the thing is, two negatives mean something forward. So space can only expand; it can't go backwards. I, I believe that. Okay. That also means that the universe cannot collapse on itself. Okay, so you're... Because the so radius is the time it so it's took. it's an open universe. The, 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 the universe expanding. expands at the, the exact velocity of light, and that velocity changes. And so it expands at the exact escape velocity, which is, which is if, if you send a rocket ship up at the exact velocity with no excess to escape Earth, that's the escape velocity. The universe expands at the exact escape velocity. But it oh, also means... It, 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 it's, but it's in the mathematics because the mathematics comes from the mathematics of black holes. Gotcha. Black holes, general relativity, the escape velocity is the, the, the event horizon always is the velocity of light. Anything falling into a, a, a black hole, the event horizon is always moving at the black uh, velocity of light. 
So how do we test your theories? Like, how, is there any um, way to um, to prove this in the observable universe? Is there any way like? Um, well, the, how to say the, the connection we had a, we had our conversation about the uh, we had a conversation about the velocity of light. Yes. And um, we know how much the velocity. Well, so I how know do we, how much the velocity of light. I, I think I said you said three, it's three millimeters per second per year. Slower I think, in it's, the past. I think it's seven. Yeah. It slows down seven millimeters, millimeters per second. So per how year. do we test whether it was the velocity the changing velocity, the variable velocity of light is the proof. Okay. And the and I told you what the what the digital velocity of light is. I you know from the square root of you know one over the square right, root. Right, because of the, the geometry change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Planck lengths and square roots underneath the one. Well, the th thing is, we have from in in black holes the, the new paradigm explain how the event horizon becomes an absolute barrier. How matter gets broken down. How light light gets down to Planck's length and can't get any shorter. And matter gets broken down through what I call de Broglie radiation, which is like synchrotron radiation, where particles radiate all their energy uh, before you you know that slows down. Cool. But the, we can prove it through the variable velocity of light. And that's also evidenced. And that gets evidenced by the, what they think is the, expand, the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. It, Henri Poincaré. Yeah, Poincaré. Yeah, he, was was math, you know, he was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, and he was a contemporary of Albert Einstein. He actually saw a model for the universe that is precisely what this universe is. And he, his model was that you can have both a universe that is finite, as seen from the outside, and infinite, as seen from within. Neat. And the way that it worked is, you start off with a, you, you assume the universe is at the very hot center, and the edge is absolute zero. And you start off the center, and you march towards the edge. But as you march towards the edge, your temperature cools. But as your temperature goes down, you have a, you, you have a decline in all of the physical, all the physics of that internal universe change in proportion to the, to the reduction in, in the temperature. You mean physical laws change? Physical laws change as you march towards the center. So I thought that at no, the beginning no. all the laws were... No, 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 I'm just talking, he's doing a conceptual thing. Oh, I see. So he says, as you walk towards the center, your legs get shorter as the temperature drops. And such that, that as you get closer, and, and, at, and he says, okay, your radius is, let's say, big R. That's the radius of the, of the, of the sphere uh, the, out to the end. And you're little r. And so what happens is, as you go towards the center, you, you're, it's big r squared divided by little r squared. Well, what happens is, as you start to approach that, that whole point, what happens is it goes down to 1. So, you're, so what happens is your temperature goes down and down by, a square, by the combination of the squares. Okay. Well, the thing is, as you walk forward, your legs get shorter and shorter and shorter until Why? you never can reach because <laughs> all the physics changes in proportion to the distance from, um, from, the, from the center. So your legs get shorter. Your legs get shorter. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's what he said. So what happens is you march and you never, never, ever get to that level. It's the same thing. What he's really saying is the velocity yeah, of light gets slower and slower as you walk. Oh, okay. So the velocity light, you never can get to that end because the velocity light keeps getting slower. So according he described to him, this exact universe. So according to him, the, very, the speed of light's variable as well, but according to him, it gets slower as time expands. You, your theory says it's it gets same faster. Thing. No, no. The velocity light gets slower oh. as the universe expands. Remember, oh. it, was, it was 10 to the 30th faster than it Oh, it's faster at the beginning. Oh, my fault. So okay. the thing is, it's gotcha. it very hot and it gets faster. And we're going towards a colder and colder universe. It's something 2.76 degrees above absolute zero right now, if you just take the general yeah, temperature. Yeah, the right, Kelvin. Yeah, it was yeah. an extraordinary temperature at the beginning. And so what happens is our legs get shorter as we walk towards the, towards the, uh, towards the ultimate goal, destiny. In time, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger.
So the thing is, you never can get to that end. So you, th there would be an infinite progress to get to that point you never can get to because your legs keep getting shorter until it's impossible to get there. He figured the universe out 120 years ago. And that's mm. unbelievable when you think about it. Yeah, uh, and, and there was no concept of black holes at that point. No concept. Not they didn't all. even know the universe was expanding. Nope. But the thing is, how can you have a universe well, that contains the universe? That the universe, so the universe was, was larger than the Milky Way galaxy yet. Yeah, they they were they barely knew what the Milky Way galaxy. Was. Yeah. But the thing is, they the thing is that's what the that's what the the basic concept of the universe. The idea of having containment. He saw you can have a universe that was, and that's from the outside yeah. is finite. A black hole in our universe looks finite to us, but to the inhabitants of the universe within that black hole, it's infinite. Hmm. And the thing is, their time and our time don't relate. What happens at the surface of a black hole is there's a total separation of cause and effect between what goes on in the black hole and what goes on outside the black hole. Well, you give me a lot to think about. I don't know that I understand all of it, but... Well, I covered an awful lot, and, I, and, yeah. and the concepts are fairly deep. But the yeah. thing is, it's, it's a very robust theory, and the formulas of general relativity confirm it all. And that's why the formulas are absolute. If you can prove one aspect of those formulas, it all links together. The velocity of light no, follows from one. Gotcha. It, it all because I have 232 formulas, and they're all interlinked. And the thing is, you all think, the well, way. the universe is all probabilistic. It's probabilistic within that inner linkage of general relativity, but the general relativity is an absolute. Yeah. And that's what makes this such a wonderful situation that we live in, so we can live with confidence that, that the universe is, uh, will, will, will develop as it should because in the end it has a beginning, it has an end, and it has in between experience. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Like I said, this is a lot to think about. I uh, think I got about 70% of it, and I think uh, I'll have to like watch this video again. And if you need to watch the video again, that's great too. Uh, it'll be here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I covered a, I covered a lot. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's, it's hard to get one aspect of it without doing it. But the right. Key, the, I know it's all interlinked. I know you have a, a lot of things, and we're going to do more conversations like this so that we can illustrate more points, and they and they all interlink. So so far, we've got the variable speed of light, and today we talked about. Um, time. So. The nature of information is something we can look at too. Maybe that will be our next video. Tune in then. Thank you very much yep. guys. Great to have you.